to install eShare, go down to your search and type company portal and open. Once company portal logs in, comes up, so give it a little bit of time. And then you're going to come up, search for apps, and you are going to type eShare. And all I did was press enter. And mine says installed. Yours will, if you click on it, it will give you the opportunity to install it. Hi again. We're going to connect your computer using eShare this time. I'm going to use my computer, this is connected up hardwired right now, just to show you what it will look like on your computer to get eShare on your device and to use it to connect to your computer. And then we'll connect it wirelessly and I'll show you how that looks. So this is my computer screen. Again, I'm just connected up hardwired, so you're seeing exactly what's on my computer. I already have eShare here but you probably don't. If you do, you're all set and you're, you're great with that. If you don't, then this is how you will put it on your computer. Now, my taskbar here is over on the left. Most people keep it down on the bottom. So yours will probably be found on the bottom. And I'm gonna do a search. And since we've already established, I need to type in over here. I'm gonna search for company portal. When that comes up, I am going to click on that to open. If it doesn't come up, get in touch with the technology department and see if they can get you connected with Company Portal or install eShare on your device. Once that comes up, I'm going to search in the search bar for eShare. eShare will come up. Mine says install. Since you haven't installed yours yet, it won't say that. You're going to click on it and you will say type here or right, click here on install. Like I said, mine is already installed, so there's no need for that. Click install and go through whatever setup process comes along. If it asks you to restart your computer, then do so. Once you have eShare installed, You're going to open up eShare on your computer and it will look like something like this. You may not see anything here. You may see a lot of things here. It doesn't matter at this point. The first thing I want you to do is name your eShare. So you're going to go to settings if it doesn't prompt you to do so. If it prompts you, then do it on prompt and then put in a name. I put mine as McCorkle. So if I'm connecting to a board, it will be clear because it will send up a message that McCorkle is connecting to the board. Then I'll know it's me and other people will know it's me connecting to the board. I will type that and then say, okay. The next thing that you're going to do is name your board. So I'm going to disconnect my computer from this for a moment. That doesn't look like the right screen, so again, I'm gonna click my home button. My home button will always take me back here. eShare is an app on my, on my screen, so I click on the apps, and then on eShare. So now this is eShare on my display because I removed my computer. We're no longer looking at my computer, we're looking at this display. The next thing you should do is name your screen. This says the DLC conference room. That's where we are. I suggest your room number or even your name. You're going to go down to settings and you are going to click right here. It says device name and it has a little piece of paper with a pencil. Click on that and name your board. Click check and you'll probably have to check it twice. All of this should be fine and we're going to close it. Now I'm ready to connect my computer 
to my display. My display has an IP number that is shown here. I've also named it. So I have a couple different options on connecting to my board. Once you open the eShare app on your computer, you will see a screen that looks a lot like this. It may list a number of the boards and then at the bottom, it will allow you to type in an IP address or to connect to a previously connected board. You can either choose your machine from the list, if you see it there, or type in the IP address and then the arrow. Once you type the arrow, you will end up at a screen that looks like this. Most of the time, you're going to want to share your screen. There's a little tiny arrow over here that if you click on it, you'll have an option to extend your screen if you would like to do that. For those of you who use extend screen where you're working on something on your actual device, but dragging something over to the larger device or projector for the students to look at. So that's an option here. TV mirror means that you would control the big display from your computer. There are applications for that, but for the most part, you will want share screen. And if you want to extend the screen, then um, share extend screen, choose that there. I put in the IP address and now I'm gonna click share screen. Now it says McCorkle starts sharing her screen and there's my screen again. And that's wireless. These are not connected to my computer anymore. Now I do not need any cords connected between my computer and the board to operate it. Now the, the touch works and the view works. Again, I can't type, but having access to my screen here, if you look on the bottom right, there's a little keyboard. I'm gonna click on the keyboard, and there is my on-screen keyboard that showed up. So now I can type here. Now I can click. If I want the keyboard up, again, I click on my keyboard. Wait a moment, and there's my keyboard that comes up. So now I can type. And enter. I apologize. The network's going slow. That has nothing to do with the board. All right, now I searched, get rid of my keyboard. I can still write on top of that the same way by accessing it with the arrows, the piece of paper with the pen, and I can draw circle. I can undo, I can redo, and if I want to go back to just touching the board, I click on the arrow and it returns me to a spot where I can actually just go ahead and go back to clicking. If I want my writing to return, then I click on the arrow again and my writing returns. If I want to get rid of that, then I hit the trash can and say okay and I can start again. I hope that helps you connect with eShare to your board, which is a very convenient thing. You don't have to have your laptop really close to your board. You can have be on the other side of the room and perhaps at the back of the classroom where you can keep an eye on what your student needs are and what they're doing on their computers if they need help getting to the appropriate website or what have you. Just a good classroom management idea. If you want to get the boards disconnected from eShare, then you are simply going to go to your computer, click on eShare, and press the red stop button. And once you do, it should stop sharing your screen. Once you stop sharing your screen, 
then the board will go back to um, one of two places. It will either say nothing's connected, in which case you press home, or you press the home, or it will bring you to the home. Right now it's acting a little slow. Let's just see if we can bring it home. So I'm gonna find one of my home buttons and I'm back to home. Home is great, always brings you back to a place you know where to go.